Hey friends, how are you? Hope you're well and you've had a good week. Mine's been not bad actually. It's been what have I done? I had a, I had a yoga lesson on Tuesday and that was just exactly what I needed. It was just so good to be moving and we did so we did I did some new yoga moves of positions and did some relaxation and it was just oh it was so nice. So we I did that and then on Wednesday Beth from Soul Sting, Stay and Dink and I did our uh, Elizabeth Penny live show. If you haven't watched that, please go do so. I will leave a link to Beth's channel down below in the description bar. We have a giveaway, so we would like you know people to... I know one person has answered so far. So, you know, if you want to be in with a chance of winning a book, then go watch the live show and hear all about Elizabeth Penny, her wonderful books that we've enjoyed so much and being with a chance of winning as I say the link will be down below I did that then yesterday didn't do much at all I spent time working on a, a bookish jigsaw that I'm doing that is it's it's really intricate it's like oh I look I stay at pieces and I think where do you fit in and then you go back three days later and I find the place it's like come on um you'll find at the end of this video um I did a wee bit of cooking yesterday so I will um, insert that at the end of this video so that was yesterday and then this afternoon I'm heading out with my other half he needs a new laptop so we're going to go and investigate about getting him a new laptop it is absolutely chucking it down the rain yeah never mind I'll get a nice hot cuppa from it so that'll be fine yeah doing, doing my good deed so reading wise it's been quite a good week so I finished Dating an Amish Flirt by Rachel J. Good. You'll find out more about that because I'm using it as my book in a beak this this month. So I'm not going to tell you any more about that one. <laughs> um, also, I finished The Innocent Dead by Lynn Anderson. You'll find out more about that because that is part of my um, reading what my parents chose for me video. So I will tell you all about that then. I also then read a book for review on my kindle and this was this for me was slightly out of my wheelhouse and slightly not it was called the wartime vet by ellie curzon and i gave this four out of five so our main character is a vet in england um she has been a vet for a while but she ends up working in this beautiful town called or wee village called bramble heath and her boss is not exactly the nicest guy in the world. He's a lazy curmudgeon, okay? He basically lets... Oh, I can't remember a main character's name. Hold on, two, sh two shakes. Her name is Laura. How could I forget that? Okay, so yes, her name is Laura. And um, as I say, she's a vet and her boss is... I say curmudgeonly is doesn't really do very much it's full of his own importance and you know he thinks that the land girls are a load of rubbish and that they really shouldn't be there etc but there is somebody going around lighting fires in the woods in the village or outside the village also putting poisoned animal feed into troughs for animals to to eat and Laura has to deal with this and she writes to the ministry and the ministry sends somebody down her boss is really not happy about this um, to the point himself and one of his best friends who happens to be a feed store owner um, basically really lambast Laura and she they they tell her she hasn't got a job anymore. But the man from the ministry and one of his colleagues who also comes down realises that Laura's actually right and it's not the land girl's fault. They are doing exactly what they should to make up the feed, etc. Um, but so who is it? So we have a mystery. And it was, I have to say, this was not what I expected. I didn't expect a mystery from it. So it tied in really, really well with March Mystery Madness. So we have Laura and the ministry man, Alistair, um, trying to work out who it is that is, is basically a traitor. 
and is wanting to stop the supply chain of food in the UK. We also have a great cast of characters within the Land Girls, and there's a wee girl, Sarah, who's a down, who's um, a boarded out, an evacuee, and the first time she tends to go round with Laura on her rounds, which is just brilliant. It is so good, and she soaks up information like there is no tomorrow. Um, she really does soak up this all the information that Laura's giving her. And the first time they meet Alistair, he's walking along a country lane, and in his arms they ha he has a kitten that he found abandoned on the road. So we say that adopts it, and she calls it Winnie. And this cat will go ev any everywhere with this child. Um, and we get life in the village. We get life with the air raid sirens going. Um. And all of this, it was really, really good. It did give me slight all creatures great and small vibes. It did have that kind of sort of feeling to it, but with a female vet. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was a great book. It's the third in the series, but you don't have to have read the other two. It's it is a stand I would say it was a standalone. It probably the other two are set in the same village, but it's a standalone. Um so really, really enjoyed that one. Um I'm then, I'm now sort of listening to Hems and Homicides by Elizabeth Penny. If you listen or go and watch our live show, you will f find out the trials and tribulations I have had about this book um, and why I'm having to listen to it in audio rather than actually have a, a physical copy. I am enjoying it. It is an interesting read. I love the way she's set up the characterization, the situation, um, small town in Maine again. I really am enjoying it. It's, it is very good. And then last night, once I'd finished The Wartime Vet, I decided to pick up a, a physical book and I'm actually reading the first one on my SAS list for this year. Woohoo! So I'm reading The Lodge in Holly Road by Sheila Roberts. Um, I am page 52 and chapter four just the start of chapter four so it's good so far <sighs> um i am i am enjoying that one so yeah so that's kind of reading wise i know it's not i'm not being able to give you two a couple of reviews but as i say you will i don't really want to put them in here so that i spoil the other two two videos that are coming so that's kind of my reading i should get ho hems and homicides if I sit and listen to it um, out with bedtime, because that's when I tend to read it, I should get it finished this weekend. Um, Sheila Roberts, The Lodge and Holly Road, probably as well, possibly get that one finished this weekend. So that's kind of going to be my reading. What else am I going to do this weekend? Well, this is the final, tomorrow's the final day of the Six Nations rugby, so definitely be watching that. Um, it's interesting there are like about three or four teams that could actually win the championship tomorrow which is like really really it is exciting um i hope scotland do well tomorrow I, you know i would love to see us beat ireland do i think it's possible i mean england beat ireland there isn't we beat england we there is no reason why we shouldn't beat um ireland we need to, the boys just need to concentrate for 80 minutes. You know, last week against Italy, I mean, well done the Italians. They, you know, they just kept going and going and going. We switched off. It was, you know, it's like they went fly away for part of the match. It was like, come on. Um, so, yeah, the boys need to concentrate for the full 80 minutes tomorrow, if not longer. So, yeah. It's possible. We will see. Um, so yeah, we've got that. I would like to do more work on my jigsaw. Um, it'd be really nice to try and finish it this month. I really would like to do that. Um, let's see, spending time with the other half tonight, this afternoon. He'll probably come up and watch some of the rugby tomorrow. Um, but apart from that, that's kind of all I have planned. Nothing, nothing, nothing too major. But that's fine. Um, so please tell me down in the comments what have you been reading this week? I would love to know what have you been doing and what are your plans for the weekend? 
Um, have you read any of the books that I've mentioned? I would really like to know. Um, or of any of the ones that the two, I mean, two I managed to tell you about, do they sound interesting to you? Um, I would love to know. But until my next video, friends, stay safe. Happy reading. Bye. Okay, I'm having an industrious morning. I'm trying... I've got, I've got a loaf there. I'm trying a new method. I'm doing double proving. Never done double proving in my life before, but I'm trying it. I'm also going to make myself some nut butter chocolatey spread. Like the... But instead of using ha hazelnuts, I'm just going to use peanut butter. And I've got cocoa here, vanilla extract, maple syrup. So we're ready to go. And while I'm being industrious, so is Ma. Ma is making cards. Let's not see which one you've made. So... These are paint. These are Dad's paintings. So she has a program on her computer that allows her to take Dad's paintings and make them into cards. So yeah. So we've got. She's just putting liners in. She's putting liners in, but she's having an industrious morning as well. So there we go. So we're both busy. Dad's out having coffee. <laughs> So um, I'll just, basically it's one of these, you bung it all together and mix it in. So we'll, we'll start doing all the, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit you here and um, try and get me, try and get this in the frame and me out the frame, but I don't think that's going to work. So start off with ye old peanut butter. Um, the one I use has low salt has no added sugar, um, which is fantastic. Uh, yes, it's a bit more expensive than... It tastes other, better. It does. My mum said it tastes better. So, why am I not making this a hazelnut spread, I hear you ask? Basically because I couldn't be gassed to go out... Corn wet day. Corn wet day. Very good in a day like this. And... No, if, um, and also I didn't really want the hassle of um, grinding the peanuts grinding all the hazelnuts ma. so I'm using this instead so I now need to go look at the recipe again and see what I do next but I'll come back to you okay we're now on to said maple syrup love this stuff it's one of these great ones that it doesn't affect your blood sugars as much, which is absolutely fan dabby dozy. Very, very happy with that. And the reason I'm going slowly is because I just don't want to overdo the ingredients. There we go. Done. So that's the maple in. Okay. Now going to three, three tablespoons of um, I'm actually making them slightly heaped so that there's a lot of coke, there's a lot of chocolatey flavour in this. Um, <laughs> um, so that's good. I I can add more. I could also, if I wanted to, with this recipe, I could add some um, coffee, but I'm not going no. to. I'm going to add. You see, I'm getting I'm getting heckled, friends. I'm getting heckled. You know, she's clicking away with a wee cornery thing and she's heckling me. So I need no, to make again for your dad. Come on. You're heckling me. So I'm gonna go and see how much how much um of this I need. I've added two two tablespoons of water and then I've added a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Yummy. If I can get the bottle open. Oh, oh I've done it. Big strong woman like me. Uh -huh. She says laughing. There we go, that's one teaspoon in. Um, I can put in a pinch of sea salt. I don't think I'll bother. I think I'll just keep this nice and simple. And now I just have to... So salt brings out the flavours. Oh, well, okay. Excuse me. No, you don't really want to look at our kitchen. Okay, I have sea salt flakes, so I'm just going to do a wee pinch of them in. And that'll be fine. Put them away. And now I'm going to use this handy dandy whisk. I may need to go to the bigger whisk, but I'm going to start with the handy dandy wee one first. And you just mix it all together. So, see if I can... If 
if I bring this over here and flip you over. So that's what it looks like. And I'm just going to whisk it all together till it's nice and smooth and silky. So um, the bowl's creaking around, so I need to hold it. So I'm going to put the camera down. But I will let you see what it looks like once it's all smooth. Okay, it's all come together. I can, I'm going to taste it and decide whether I want to add more cocoa, more peanut butter, more maple syrup. I'll get mum to taste it as well, but it looks delish. Mmm. Oh, I like that. Ma? Mm hmm You want to come taste him? And don't worry, I've got a cloth here. I'm actually wiping my... My tasted spoon on. Well, hang on a minute. Get rid of sticky. It's all right. I'm going to feed you. Mm. What do you think? Just leave it as is? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've got plenty of jars over there. I spy jars. So I'm going to put this into a jar and just put it in the fridge. But mm, I've got a nice chocolatey spread for putting on toast. On no, all cakes. All cakes or toast. The new, the new bread with this. Ho oh, ho, so cool. Or even I've actually got half a half of a loaf in the freezer in the in the breadboard. So, mm, yum. But I will leave where I got a link where I got this recipe in in the description bar below. Hope you enjoy it and you make it. Bye. Okay, friends. The, the loaf is looking really really nice. Um, I am very loath to knock this back if I'm honest. Um, so I've got the oven on it just now. What I'm thinking of doing is transferring this into a casserole dish and cooking it that way. Um, but I don't know. I'll, I'm going to talk to mum about it, but we'll we'll make decisions and I'll let you know what we're going to do. But it is looking good. Okay, we've we're, we've knocked it back. I'm going to take it out. Hopefully it'll just come out. Um, it's got all. Yep, it's coming out, it's coming out, it's coming out. And then I'll just knead it and put it into that tin and let it prove again. Okay, I'm no Paul Hollywood, guys. Um, but this is me just, you know, just turning it and rolling it, basically. I have to say it feels good. It feels a really good dough. So I'll do a bit more kneading and then just put it into the tin and just cover it with a tea towel again and let it prove but I've got the oven on now so hopefully this will be able to prove in the next you know in a wee while It'll take about I reckon maybe take about an hour two hours to do but that's it in there I just chuck it over here and it's a two pound loaf tin I'm gonna sort it a wee bit and then cover it with this tea towel and let it go on with it okay friends well there's the vid there I've put the loaf into a a green into a, a, a bag. It, bag. Holly bag. Do I think the two rise, the double rise was worth it? Have I got a bigger loaf? Not particularly. Um, I'll be interested to see what the texture is like when I when we cut into it. But will I do it again? No. No. Again, the, you you heard the expert. No, we're just I'm just going to stick it my normal. Um, my normal one, so Let's there we go. Put it back in the old tin, but the mum's doing more cards. Let's see if I can go that way. So, yeah, so that's what Ma is busy doing today, and she's going to stick, she's coloured these in, she's going to stick them onto cards. So, that's going to be lovely. Oh, they look, look at the puppy. Oh, the cute, two cute puppies. Some more, oh, lovely. They're very nice, Mum. Cool. Excellent. So she's got she's a nice wee production line going here.